Welcome back. In the last lecture, we looked at uh, our own contribution to the carbon footprint as households. In this uh, lecture, we look at what the health sector contributes. It's not very well known. Uh, the health sector is a good sector. It helps people. But to learn that the health sector is also a culprit when it comes to emissions is maybe news to some of you. So let's look into this. The examples come from UK, from France and from Germany. There's very little known about uh, the same emission problems in middle and low income countries and it would be good to do some research on this. So let's look at the UK. The health sector generates 18.6 million tons of CO2. Is that much? Well, it's 2.6% of total UK emissions. It's 25% of all public sector emissions. And as a comparison, it's uh, the same as the consumption of the entire part of Northern Ireland. So it is large. And it has a stronger than average tendency to increase. So what's going on? Why is that so? What does the health sector do to emit so much? Before we get into this, the UK, after having seen this, has reduction goals. So you see uh, the four columns from 1992 to uh, 2015, that's what they want to do. And it's very ambitious. You see the current ones, it's the left, uh, it's the 18.6, it's the column on uh, the uh, 2003. Then you always need to know till when they will pr promise something. And in the first line you see till 2020, the UK wants to reduce carbon emissions from 18.6 tons to 12.2 tons. That's the, the largest column in 2003 to the column adjacent to the right. And they say in addition till 2050, which is the column on the very right, we want to reduce 60% from 18.6 to, uh, to, to then. And the base year is also something you need to know with these pledges is 1992. So you see this here, that's the reference year, and the percentages refer to the reference year. And you see this in the arrows that I have put here, minus 26% and minus 60% uh, till 2050. That's very ambitious. So how can they do this? And to answer this, we need to know what it is that constitutes the carbon footprint of a hospital, for example. And I show you now from a study that the National Health Service did that um, we have seen that the largest component of this is in consumables. It's not in transport, it's not in heating, it is in uh, consumables or procurement as they call it here. So you see 18% is travel, then building energy use, what everybody would have suspected, including myself, is 22% and 59% is procurement. What is hiding behind procurement? And you see the table in the top part now uh, gives you the details in tons and percentages uh, that led to this um, graph. If you want to know what the 59% are made of, what contributes, you have to look at the next graph. And here you see the breakdown of procurement items. And the largest part, about 60%, is the blue column to the very left. Pharmaceuticals. So drugs contribute, the consumption and the production and the transport of drugs constitute the lion's share of procurement items, which in turn are two-thirds of all carbon footprint, of the entire carbon footprint. That's a surprise. It was a surprise to me. You can go through this uh, in, in peace and quiet after the lecture, but this is the take-home message. 60% of the entire carbon footprint due to procurement, and in that 60% due to drugs. Of course, the, the drug itself, uh, you wonder what did the drug do to create this carbon footprint, and that is, of course, all the upstream production that is counted here. It is counted on the principle that whatever you trigger in the production process is allocated to you. If you buy something, you're responsible of the entire footprint of the production. So how does a drug generate a large carbon footprint? And in this graph you see, uh, you see eight parts of the process from 
raw material to waste recycling to the right. And uh, all these steps contribute to the carbon footprint of a drug. And most of them are outside the hospital. The hospital is within these uh, pointed red arrow borders. That is uh, when you buy it, when you use it. And this is what uh, is the carbon footprint contribution in the hospital. Afterwards, it's uh, waste or if you prescribe something outside the hospital, that's all your carbon footprint. And upstream to the left, the raw materials, what the drug company does with it, uh, the supply chain of the drug company, the aluminium foil in which this is now put into a blister package and so forth. So we understand how a drug can become a, a carbon footprint generating entity. And uh, drug companies have uh, know this, for example, and all companies know this, that they have upstream emissions. These are called scope three emissions. Then they have the production. I'm now in a company, let's say a drug company. And then for them, the hospital is a downstream emission. So it is very complicated, but you, we have to understand that it's not only what makes smoke and what is obvious that contributes to the carbon footprint. We've seen this at the example with the example of the health sector. And this is taken from a company, a, a European's largest uh, drug company, if I'm well informed. Uh, Sanofi is a drug company in France and they have 42% of their procurement in their carbon footprint. So they need to manage their uh, suppliers as a hospital needs to make sure they buy low carbon antihypertensive drug, drugs and one day it will be labeled not only how much milligrams of this it has but also how much carbon it has and then a hospital director would buy the lowest carbon let's say antihypertensive drugs so let me f uh, you can finish this uh, slide uh, also in peace and quiet these are the components of the carbon footprint of the drug company that provides the drug to the hospital and procurement is for them also the second largest here energy and transport is very big in a, in a drug company. The last slide is something that we did in my institute in, of public health at Heidelberg University. Um, we tried and we don't have any operating theater. We are just uh, 60 people working on computers and uh, we don't produce more than maybe papers and uh, teaching and so forth. So just by simple measures, by uh, switching off the lighting by switching off the printers, the screen, the computers and so forth, we were able to save 33% uh, percent of our carbon footprint. And if you add this to the entire university, it would be tons and tons and I think 400,000 euros per year. So it makes sense to try to uh, go through this exercise and convince people that it saves money, it saves also CO2. So this is the quintessence of this uh, slide. So thank you very much. This is what I wanted to tell you about the carbon footprint of the health sector.